So we're going to continue talking about uh, buffers in this section. So the second topic that chapter 17 has is buffers. And so we're going to look at if we mix two things together, like a weak acid and a salt, what does that look like in the beaker? So draw yourself two different beakers here, and we're going to draw what is the dominant species floating around in there. So if I have a mixture of acetic acid and sodium acetate, acetic acid is going to be a pretty big component or big concentration in there. I'm going to have a Na plus and then acetate ion. Okay. And then the acetic acid is going to break up a little bit. So you're going to have the tiny, tiny little H plus and tiny, tiny little acetate in there. But what's interesting about this combination is this part here from the acetic acid and the acetate coming from the salt give you both an acid and a base component, okay? And generically, you could write out a, a buffer as being HA for the acid and A minus for um, the anion, the base part. So why do we use weak? Well, we'll talk a little bit more about why they're weak, um, mostly because they only partially dissociate so they don't make the equilibrium go one way or the other. But how do they generally work? So if we have this buffer here, Okay, where I have both acidic and basic components in there, H, A, and A minus. Well, the interesting thing is if I'm adding a base to a buffer, okay, that OH that is introduced to that buffer is then going to react with the acid part, and you're going to produce more anion plus water. If I add base acid to a buffer, I'm adding H plus, it's going to react with the A minus, whatever the basic component is, and make more HA. So when you are looking at buffers, realize that this is a weak acid, okay? But realize that that H is going to be ripped off, okay? It's going to rip off that H plus when you add that OH to it. So that's why it's going to force this to go one direction. So it's not going to be in equilibrium anymore. And likewise here, the A minus, okay, is going to suck up that H plus to make more HA. But what's cool about a buffer is it regenerates itself because you make more A minus and more HA, which are the two components you have normally in that buffer. So that is why buffers are so amazing, because they don't change in pH when you add base or acid to it. Now, you might know some of your biology, your, your blood is buffered. That's important because if you eat or something changes in your body, if you get a big influx or a big change in pH, that's going to definitely affect your cells. So buffers are very important for many different applications. So how do you actually make a buffer? For number one and number two are going to be the big ones that you can um, easily make buffers with. So adding a salt of a weak acid to a weak acid. So the easiest way to make a buffer is to add a salt of a weak acid to a weak acid. So let's say, for example, I have NaF and HF. So this is a salt of the weak acid. So this is a weak acid. So what you create is F minus can react with any acid that you add to it to make HF. And OH, if it's coming in, is going to react with the HF to produce water and more of the anion. So again, focusing on the fact that HF and F minus are in your original buffer. Okay, So F minus is going to come from the salt. HF is going to come from your wheat. Adding a weak base to a, a weak base to adding a salt of a weak base to a weak base. So again, um, your major one that you're going to have is um, ammonia and ammonium salts. Okay, so again, NH4 plus is going to react with any base that's get introduced, and you get water and ammonia. And then the ammonia, being a base, is going to react with any acid that's added to make more ammonia. Okay. So again, the cool thing about buffers is that they regenerate themselves. They regenerate themselves. All right. So 
those two are the easiest to do. The harder ones are to do things with strong acids because strong acids, because they're gonna to dominate too much of it, you're gonna to have to put an excess amount of the other species in there. So HCl is gonna donate your H plus and the NaF is gonna donate the F minus. But this needs to be a weak concentration in order for that to work because otherwise it's gonna be way too acidic for that to work. Okay. What if you add a strong base? Same kind of idea. So you could have NaOH, the OH minus, and the NH4 plus is going to be in excess. Okay. OH minus and your weak acid. So that's another way you can do it. You could do a strong base to an excess of weak acid, or you could do a strong acid and a weak base, but much harder to do. So with these buffers that we're talking about, we have something called buffer capacity and buffer range. So buffer capacity has to do with the amount of acid or base that a buffer can neutralize before the pH changes, okay? So this is gonna depend upon concentration of how much you have in there. So there's gonna be a point at which you start adding an acid to a base or a base to a, a buffer and it's going to completely change its pH. Okay, so there is a point of no return for some of that. And buffer range is what we call the pH range where the buffer neutralizes any acid or base, okay? So this is gonna depend upon something called the pKa. So remember P stands for the negative log of your Ka value, okay? So for something like acetic acid, okay, I have a Ka of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So what would my pKa be? It's going to be 4.74. So around that range is gonna be where that particular buffer re, um, behaves the best. 